Hey guys, it's Lindsay. So today I am going to be telling you guys how I got accepted into seven colleges. Let me start by saying a little disclaimer, I'm still shook. Okay, this video is basically giving you guys advice, tips, and tricks for applying to college, kind of like an applying to college 101 with Lindsay. So I'm just here to give you guys a lot of tips and tricks and advice when applying to colleges and some things that might help increase your chances into getting into college, but it is not guaranteed. Okay, so I just want to get that out of the way. Let's get into this video. Don't forget to subscribe below and join the family as well as click the bell for notifications to be turned on so that you know when I upload. I am a low-key nerd. Yes, a beauty guru, blonde cheerleader who's a nerd. I know, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys some background because this is important when applying to colleges, your background, especially in high school. Freshman year, I was almost a straight B student, okay? Sophomore year, I was uh, a B student. Junior year, I was almost straight A student, and then senior year, I'm a straight A student, so it, there, it's a venture. But anyway, yeah, so that's kind of my background. I took my ACT in June 2016. Took the SAT twice. I took it in May and June of 2016. I was involved in varsity cheerleading since freshman year. I was also a captain my of the winter season, my freshman and sophomore year. I was a co-captain sophomore fall year, and then I was a captain of varsity fall my senior year. So that's kind of confusing because I, I kind of had some winter seasons off and it's kind of all over the place. I'm pretty sure that's right. Don't quote me if I'm wrong because I'm trying to be as factual as based as I can with you guys, but I'm also still concussed so I might say something that. So that is my background. I'm also in the Thespian Honor Society as well as Quill and Scroll Honor Society. So those are, Thespian is being more than two shows in my school career, and then Quill and Scroll is an honor society. I was in my junior and currently junior and senior year, um, and it's kind of like an honor society for people who like photography, journalism, writing, all of that fun stuff. So those are the two honor societies I'm in, as well as in my free time I volunteer at Maryland SPCA, and it's my favorite thing to do. I'm going there tomorrow, the day after I'm filming this, and I think that's like majority of my background. My dog is chilling, and I'm outside because it's so nice, and that's really rare in Maryland, especially in February. It's like 70 degrees, but whatever, I'm okay with it. If it's not gonna snow, it might as well be nice. I applied to seven schools. I applied to a community school, two in-state schools, two random schools that I liked, and two New York schools. That was kind of my method. So that is my first tip, is to pick schools that you like and pick a variety of schools. So you want to choose some in-state to be safe and have safety schools. You want to choose your dream schools because you uh, should at least apply to one of your dream schools. Even if you say, I'm never going to get in, apply because you never know. Um, and then another one is just apply. I mean, you don't have to do it that way. You can apply to as many or as little as you want. I just think it's good to have a variety, some in state, some out of state in your dream schools. I think that's a really good idea to like have a wide array. So the schools that I applied to, my three in state schools were Towson, HCC, and Loyola. The two kind of random schools were Christopher Newport as well as East Carolina University. And then my two New York schools, Hofstra and Pace. I kind of had three that were like, three or four that were kind of safer. Maybe I would get in, maybe I wouldn't. Um, and then three that were like, I have no idea. It's in the hands of the school completely. And the three that I had no idea about and were kind of the wild cards were Hofstra, Loyola, and Christopher Newport. Cause those three were the hardest to get into out of the ones that I applied to. And then the others were still hard to get into, but um, um, a little a little easier I don't know um, getting into any school is a huge accomplishment so even if you've gotten into one school hallelujah you you go because it's 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 a really interesting process that brings me to another tip is to apply to schools that are realistic as you heard none of these schools were Ivy League because I know that my scores and my stuff would never get me into an Ivy League college. I mean, it might, you never know if, but I don't know. I don't wanna like insult anyone, but I feel like it's always good to be realistic and to apply to schools that you have a reasonable chance of getting into because college applications are expensive. I spent over $300, like me and my family, paying for these college applications. So, cause some schools will send you fee waivers, which they'll email you and you'll get so many emails from colleges, especially if you use Naviance, which is another tip to use Naviance because 
it's really helpful if you use the college finder and you can put in what you want to major in or the size of the school, where location, anything. You can literally just limit, put your scores in so you know what's realistic, what you could get into. Um, and that's a really good tool. So definitely use Naviance. And if you need help, get a teacher's help. Something else, ask your teachers for recommendations junior year. The very end of junior year, ask teachers to be your recommendations. I recommend asking three or more. On, like I said, it depends on what schools you're applying to because some colleges require like two recommendations, others require like four. It really depends. So also have a good idea junior year of where you're going to want to apply so that you know how you have to do your junior year in order to be able to get into those schools as well as so that you know, okay, I need two college, uh, I need two teacher recommendations for this. I need a counselor recommendation for this. Just know what you have to have done. Another tip is I got the Common App app. It's called Common App on Track and I use this on my phone and basically it just tells you what not every school uses Common App. Some of them you have to do the online application but basically it just tells you the schools and their deadlines. Um, so Hofstra, Loyola, Christopher Newport, and Pace were all on College App, Common App, which was really nice because Common App is super nice because it takes forever to finish the full entire application, but it's one essay. So that makes life so much easier. Some of the schools, I think Hofstra did, and I feel I had to do an extra prompt for ECU too, but that was on their website. So HCC, ECU, and Towson were not on Common App. So just a heads up, if you're applying to ECU, Towson, or HCC, they're not on Common App, so you do have to do their own separate application on their website, so be prepared to write a different essay. Sometimes you can kind of fudge and tweak essays to where they can work for another school so that you don't have to write a million essays. And like I said, some schools do require what they call writing supplements. That's what they call them in Common App. And like I said, Hofstra had one. So you just gotta be really careful, but Common App is super helpful, so if your schools use Common App, I highly, highly, highly recommend it because it makes your like application process so much easier. You can pay right on there, you can do your entire application, your essay, your writing, supplements, like you can do everything on there. And it's so easy and it's such a good way to stay organized because when you have to also do another application for like, for, like I said, for Towson HC, HCC and DCU, it can be kind of a hassle, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. And if they just have their application online on their website, then you just gotta do it. But Common App is a super helpful thing, so make sure a school you're applying to is an Common App, because if you can get all of your applications on Common App, it's so easy, because you just have to take the time to finish the Common App application. It asks you about family, it asks you for your essay, it asks you about extracurriculars, grades, like all of that fun stuff. So ask your teachers super early to be able to write your recommendations, and you also wanna stay on top of the paperwork. So so if you have to fill out a form to what schools you need the applications from what teachers, fill it out and give it to your teachers early because you don't want to request them late because then they might get sent to the schools late and that's not really, doesn't really look as professional. So one, I recommend to take the ACT and SAT. Two, that kind of goes back to like know what your schools require because if none of your schools require and ACT, you technically don't have to spend the money to take it, but I do recommend taking the ACT and SAT, especially, and take them early. Take them junior year, because your senior year, you are not going to want to take an SAT or an ACT. And also, it's normally close to deadlines, which it's nerve-wracking when you take an SAT and you have to wait in a few weeks, an entire month, to get your scores back so that you can send them to the schools. Because you have to send your ACT scores and your SAT scores through their websites so college board and the act website make sure they're the legit ones and you'll have to send your scores which also costs money everything with the college application process costs money sending in your applications sending your scores like it's a lot of money that goes into it so also save early if you know that you're gonna have to pay for them yourself it helps if you have all of your information in one place so what I actually ended up doing was making a note on my phone saying college apps log on info because a lot of these schools, especially once you send your applications, are going to like send you an email saying thank you for sending, submitting your application, you'll hear back, blah, 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 blah. A lot of times you have to make a password and username. Sometimes the schools will give you a username or a 
student ID number, especially when you get accepted, oftentimes they will send you a password and a username to log into a certain portal so that you can check the status of your application or your results. Like for So for most of the schools you apply to, you're going to have to make some kind of password so that you don't confuse all of your college's passwords. Make a note. I'm not, I can't show you guys because it has all of my passwords and usernames but have the school, the username, and the password. The school, the username, and the password. And what I did, which I think is kind of funny, is when I got into a school, I put like the celebration emoji. That was cool. So that is really useful, is have a note with all of your college login info. Another huge recommendation I have is apply as early as possible. So with the college application, most schools, they have early decision, early action, and then general action, general decision general I don't know they have a general and some schools are rolling as well Towson was rolling ECU is rolling I think and then the other ones I applied early action you don't want to apply early decision unless you are a hundred percent fully committed if I get in I will go here highly recommend early action because you're the first like huge swarm of applications they see you early and they're honestly I think it's way more likely to get accepted if you apply earlier because you're some of the first things that they see and if you think about it the more applications they get it's gonna be harder to pick through and pick and choose who they're gonna accept so if yours is an early before the huge wave of like rolling and regular decision like all, the, all of these applications are coming in. If you're in that early cluster, you're more likely to get in. I don't know if that's like a proven fact, but honestly, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because the earlier you are, you're some of the first applications that they see and they say, oh, they're on top of it. They sent their application early. They're interested in my school. And if they, they obviously look at it and make their decision. I'm not saying you're guaranteed to get in if you apply early action. I just think it's a really, really, really good idea. And also, most early action, I think all of mine were in November time period. Like November 15th, I think was a huge one. November 1st for some of them. But um, yeah, and you just have to look at the schools you're applying to and see what their deadlines are and do that early. I'm telling you guys, if do not procrastinate. This is one thing, you know me, I can be a pretty good procrastinator, but I get my ish done when I need to. So definitely, definitely don't procrastinate. Ask your teachers for recommendations. Start applications early. Take your ACT and SAT, send them your scores. Like, and you can send a school your scores before you send your application because they'll just hold them aside until they get your application and then they'll pull it, put it all together. So that is another thing. But don't wait, apply early. And then once you're done all of your applications, you just have to wait for decisions. And it's so nice when you're done all of your applications. You really don't wanna have to wait last minute and be like, oh, I took my SAT late, so I have to wait for my scores to apply and blah, 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 but don't wait <laughs> this is something i will i'm 100 percent recommending do not procrastinate get on top of it stay on top of it be organized have all of your information and honestly i have it inside but write down take a piece of paper say this is the school i'm applying to this is when their deadline is this is how much it is to apply how to send my scores and then check it off once you're done once you apply once you send your application check it off and then keep going until you finish all of your applications so I think those are the biggest recommendations and tips that I have. Just to show you guys um, that I'm not lying and that I'm not crazy, I have all of this stuff. This is all of my acceptance stuff from all of the schools. So I'm gonna start with acceptance letters. I can't show you guys like in detail. I don't know if that's like confidential or something. Probably just gonna show you, and I don't want you guys to see my dress, but this is Christopher Newport's acceptance letter. It's Towson, East Carolina. Hofstra, um, I met with this dude um, in school. That's another tip. A lot of schools have college like people come to you and talk about their school and their programs and stuff so go to those. Sign up for those on Naviance is where I signed up for them and like hear the schools out. That's a good way to decide if you want to actually apply to a school because a lot of schools send out like people to represent them and talk to a whole bunch of different schools so watch Naviance because a lot of times you can sign up for those college visits and guidance offices so that you can hear that stuff. So sign up for those, but that's normally on Naviance. Pace, HTC, Loyola. So I'm not lying. I did get into all of these schools. And no, also, I just want to say I'm not trying to brag at all. But honestly, I worked 
my tail feathers off for four years. So I am proud as heck about this. Like, and this is, my dad said this, pretty rare to get into every single school that you apply to, which I didn't realize that was like a rare thing. And honestly, once I got accepted into three, I was really like convinced I wouldn't get into the other three because it was just very, it's very, very rare. Mm -hmm. So I just want to point that out too. It's kind of like a gamble. Not actually, but you never know what colleges are going to think. Whether it's a safety school or an Ivy League, you never know. I still don't know how I got in all these schools. Like, I am so humble and, like, thankful to all of these schools for accepting me. And I'm still shook. Like, I honestly... My parents always tell me that I don't give myself enough credit, which is also something important. Like, if you work hard for something and then it pays off, realize that you deserve it and that you worked your little tail feathers off for four years. So if you're a freshman and you're watching this, don't slack, okay? Because if you don't slack and you work hard, it'll pay off. And I'm starting to really believe that and actually give myself credit for the hard work that I've done for four years. And even now, it doesn't stop senior year because those colleges that you get accepted to, and especially if you're committing to a school, they see your report card your senior year. So seniors, if you're out there, don't slack off. I'm always yelling at my friends, like, come to school, do your homework, <laughs> because it's not over. Even if you get accepted, I think some of these acceptance letters say that they can provoke it, especially if you are, like, slacking off. Remember that your admission offer is contingent upon the successful completion of your senior year, okay? Guys, don't slack off your senior year, okay? I, after midterms, I can say you can take a chill pill a little bit, but don't get ease in all of your classes okay that is a huge recommendation especially if you're a senior or if you're a freshman and then juniors I know it's stressful I know it's hard SATs ACTs college applications college tours all of these college talk and dib -dib 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 -dib. take what they say take a day and don't think about college at all but stay on top of it because the last thing you want is all of these applications hanging over your head. So get them done early, get them sent in early, and then you just have to wait. And then honestly, I'm so glad I, I had all of my decisions by January, which is super nice. I'm sorry if this is a long video, but I just want to make sure I give you guys a lot of information and everything so that you can be all hip and I can actually cover what I want to and talk about and give you guys advice on. Some schools just notify you by mail, but some schools do let you see the result online, and I'm pretty sure Hofstra and Loyola were the only two that I saw online. All of the others, I had to wait for the letter to come in. And also, if you get rejected from a college, even though I can't really speak from experience, but I know a few friends who have gotten rejected, kind of think of it. That's also why I recommend applying to several schools so that even if you do get rejected from some of them, you still have open options, which is also why I think it's a good idea to apply to a variety of schools and locations and different things. Yeah, if you get rejected from a school, try to just kind of accept it and move on. Colleges, I know I, I literally Googled how to deal with college denying, like Googled it to try to mentally prepare for it because that that's another thing is you gotta be, you gotta know that there's a very real chance that you can get accepted or denied. Honestly, it's 50-50 for like everything. Cause like I said, you never know if a college is gonna love you or if they won't. And also when you write your essays, Get them proofread by a teacher, by a parent, read them aloud, make sure they sound right because you don't want, you really don't want any errors in your letters. And write about something, some people say guilt trip them, maybe they'll let you in and give you money. Some people say be real. I say be real. I say whether that's guilt tripping or being the happiest person alive. Write what you feel passionate about, what you feel like you can speak on. Personally, my uh, essay would, had to deal with uh, my speech impediment. When I was little, I had a speech impediment. I was in speech classes for a while growing up, and now I want to major in communications. And that's kind of what I wrote about. You know, <laughs> so, like, you never know where you're going to go in life. And write something that you feel passionate about, and that's something I feel passionate about. And that's a journey that really developed me into the person I am. Like I said, I went from barely being able to communicate with people to wanting to major in communications. You see the irony in that? Be honest, that is another thing. Be brutally honest on your applications because if you lie on your applications 99.999% of the times, they are gonna find out eventually. Even if you go to the school and they find out you lied on your application, I'm pretty sure they can like, kick you out. But 
don't lie be completely honest but that's also why you want to work your little tooties off for four years so that you don't have to lie and you can be proud of what you've accomplished and be proud of what happens after <laughs> so I think I'm gonna end the video here I really hope that this was 100% informative and honest and just able to help you guys if whether you're applying to colleges right now or going to or if you're a junior or a senior I hope you guys enjoyed it whoever's watching this thank you for watching and taking the time especially if you made it this far because I know this is gonna be a long video but like I said I wanted it to be very informative and give you guys a lot of information about me and my experience about in general tips and tricks so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it comment below any video requests if you got into any colleges if you're going to apply to colleges uh, just let me know get me hip tell me all about your experience too uh, that would be great to hear about your guys's personal experiences stop watching and subscribe to join the family because we're awesome family and we are all inclusive so anyone can be a part of it and yeah i will see you guys in my next video i really hope you enjoyed it and i love you bye Mwah.